What are the questions that you can expect to be asked during an interview at Google for a technical writing position? My name is Josh, and I have over 10 years of experience in technical writing. I'm also the founder of Technical Writer HQ. This video is for technical writers who are preparing for an interview at Google. And before we dive into it, take a moment to subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with all of our future videos on technical writing. Now, let's go ahead and get started. So working at Google is a dream for many people. Every year, many positions come up at this tech giant for technical writers, UX writers, and other related positions. And interviews at Google's are through, and the best way to really go through an interview there is ultimately to prepare for it. And if you've been invited for an interview, make sure that you've read the job description carefully and prepared accordingly. Other than on-site interviews, Google also requests writing samples. You may also be asked to complete writing exercises and assignments to allow them to assess your writing skills. And at the end of your interview, you also get a chance for sometimes a reverse interview. So at the end of that interview process, that means it's your turn to interview the interviewer and to get a better understanding of Google and the job position that you're applying for. Again, it's best to be prepared with a list of good questions, no matter if you're being interviewed or you're the one asking those questions. And just some questions that you may ask the hiring manager or recruiter are questions like, what skills are you looking for in a candidate? Or what programs do you provide for upwards mobility? Now, it's important to know that Google conducts three to four technical interviews before the final selection. The hiring process is often a long one. It could take from three to six months for screening the candidates before the hiring is actually made. And in this video, we're going to go over some technical and non-technical questions that you may be asked during an interview at Google. And the questions are pulled from verified sources like Glassdoor and from some candidates who are interviewed at Google for a technical writer's seat. Now, we don't claim to know all the questions that will be asked. The actual questions asked will vary from interview to interview, and it's also likely that questions won't be repeated. So neither do we claim that our suggested answers are the best that you can give. So think of this video as the information contained in it only as a resource that can help you and guide you and prepare you for landing your dream job there. Now let's go ahead and look at some technical questions that might pop up in a Google technical writer interview based on the sources we looked at. The first interview question you might get is what are the typical obstacles a technical writer faces during information gathering? This is one of the most common technical questions interviewers ask. The question intent is that the interviewer wants to know your process for finding credible information. And here's how you can answer it. First, that you'll interview subject matter experts or SMEs. The people with the most credible information are SMEs. As a technical writer, you have to frequently interview these SMEs and you'll learn from SMEs and then you create the content and documentation. And this documentation that you created is also vetted by the SMEs during a process called verification. It's an iterative process and requires frequent interaction with these experts and other technical experts as well. You should also share personal experiences to help demonstrate your expertise and build credibility. You can also share the challenges related to information gathering that you face during a particular technical writing project and how you overcame them. The next question is, what is your process for interviewing SMEs? The question intent here is that the interviewer wants to know about the process you use one, doing the interviewing of these experts. And this helps the interviewer determine the depth of your practical experience. Here's how you can answer this. First, share personal experience. The more personal experience and case studies that you share, the more expertise that you'll be able to show. Tangible experiences always help you. And if you are an experienced technical writer, then you should be able to share your experience and not have any trouble answering this question. Even if you lack experience though, you can share the basic process for interviewing SMEs, which is prepare for the interview with them, conduct the interview and summarize key points and follow up on the interview. This demonstrates that you know that interview is a process and not an event, and that you know the basic components in order to make sure the SME feels comfortable with giving you information. And the third question here is, what are the documentation and publication tools that you have worked with? You have to communicate your knowledge of technical documentation software, whether that includes software like Confluence, Madcap, or others. But you need to do so in a way that demonstrates knowledge and experience. The question intent here is that different tools are available in the market. 
and there are possibly hundreds of different documentation tools. And some are more suited to particular types of documentation, such as Document 360 for knowledge bases and GitHub for version control. And some tools like Notion are used for effective collaboration between team members. Through this question, the interviewer really wants to judge the depth and breadth of your technical writing experience. Again, you should always share personal experience because that's the best way to build credibility. And you could do this by sharing the names of software you have used, the types of projects you use the tools for, your favorite tools, and your reasons for preferring a tool or tools over others. And next, you wanna demonstrate knowledge. If you are an experienced technical writer, the interviewer may ask you about certain tools. The best way to prepare for such questions is to research and develop an overview of the most popular tools. This will demonstrate to the interviewer that even though you may be lacking in experience, you are still up to date with the latest trends in technical writing. Now we're on to another potential question. What is DDLC? Here, the question intent is that the interviewer wants to know if you are aware of the document development lifecycle, so the DDLC. Here's how you can answer it. Even if you have never been a part of the document development lifecycle, you can still share the step-by-step -step DDLC process, which is researching, analyzing, planning, designing, content developing, and reviewing, publishing, and maintaining. Knowing the steps of the process helps to build your credibility. Also note that the question can be stated in other words, like what are the phases of documentation development? Or what are different phases of content creation? So keep that in mind and look out for those different types of wording within questions you might be asked. A related question here that you also might get is what is the SDLC? The question intent is that the interviewer wants to know whether you are aware of the difference between SDLC and DDLC and to gauge your knowledge about the SDLC. And here's how to answer it. The SDLC stands for Software Development Lifecycle. The SDLC is comprised of different phases, which include requirement gathering, analysis, designing, coding and implementing, testing, deploying, and maintaining. And each phase of the SDLC requires different types of documents. And each type of document has its own DDLC. The sixth question is if you were to build a computer from scratch, what parts would you need? This type of question is not asked to check whether you can correctly list the different parts of a computer. The question intent is that the interviewer wants to know about your mental process for building things and to learn about your approach to problem solving and also information architecture. So how you understand topics and subtopics within those topics and how they relate to each other. Here's how to answer it. You can say the recommended method of thinking about building stuff or solving problems is to first develop an overview and then go into the details. For computer, this means identifying the main components, which are processing devices, CPU, GPU, memory, so ROM, RAM, hard drives, and input devices, keyboard, mouse, touchscreen, output devices, display, printer, and then going into the details and building each component. For a document, this means identifying the main components, which are title page, table of contents, list of figures, list of tables, introduction, individual chapters, conclusion, appendices, glossary, index, and then going into the details about building the individual components. For general problems, the approach is similar. You want to identify the major issues, go into details for each of the major issues, and so on. Now question seven is, can you evaluate one of the writing samples that you submitted? The question intends that the interviewer wants to assess your ability to critically analyze and judge a piece of writing. You should answer by mentioning some important concepts, including the audience, which is the most important part of content creation. You need to understand your audience and only then can you create content that will satisfy their needs. So start off by sharing the audience for what your writing sample was created for and how your writing met the audience's needs. Then mention objectives, which is what is the objectives of the writing and the audience. So the audience may have a learning objective. What do they want to get out of it in order to take X action? And what was the objective behind your writing? Was it to inform? educate, inspire, or persuade. And make sure to focus on these objectives of your writing sample in particular. Next, focus on the structure and outline because good and logical content structure is essential for reader comprehension. The structure depends on the audience and the content objectives. You can share the structure of your writing sample and demonstrate how the structure contributed to the objectives. Another question you might get is whether XML and HTML are similar. The question intent is that the interviewer wants to gauge the depth of your technical knowledge. Here's how to answer it. First, if you don't know the difference, it's better just to admit it and mention you can quickly learn it rather than trying to come up with a story that will fall apart under further questioning. Even though the names are similar of these technologies, they're actually quite different. 
Hypertext markup language, or HTML, displays data and describes the structure of a web page. Extensible markup language, or XML, is a simple text-based format for representing structured information. So documents, data, configuration, books, transactions, invoices, and much more. You may also be asked about other technologies and the best way to prepare in advance. Now that we have reviewed a few technical questions that can come up in a Google Technical Writer interview, now let's review some generic interview questions. First one is, what do you like about technical writing? The question intent is that the interviewer wants to know whether you are interested in technical writing and why you are interested in technical writing. Here's how to answer it. You can share the reasons behind your choice of taking up technical writing as a profession. And these possible reasons include a profession that allows you to indulge in your love of writing and interest in technology, learning about new technologies, being part of technology creation process, and also the fact that you enjoy helping others through good documentation. You might also get a question to drill down on your understanding of what technical writing is, such as how do you scale from copywriting, creative writing, to technical writing? This question is usually for the candidates who are transitioning from one writing role to now wanting to transition to a technical writing role. And the question is that the interviewer wants to know the reasons behind this switch. And here's how you can answer it. You can share your reasons for transitioning from copywriting, creative writing to technical writing. And these reasons can include that you want a more defined career path, that you're looking for career growth. And you can also share that the writing skills you already possess can help you and will help you as a technical writer. And the last question here is, how do you deal with difficult team members? The question intends that the interviewer wants to learn about your teamwork and collaboration skills, particularly with engineers, product managers, and designers. And here's how you can answer it. You can start off by sharing that you are aware of the collaborative nature of technical writing and that teamwork is essential to success. And that it's also important for technical writers to be involved in the beginning of the software development lifecycle. Next, you should share a few examples of how you dealt with difficult team members in the past. Most importantly, how you overcame those challenges. And there you have it. We went over the typical technical and non-technical questions that you can expect to be asked during a Google Technical Writer interview. And I hope that our tips for answering them helped you. And if you found them helpful, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with everything technical writing. And again, my name is Josh. I'm the founder of Technical Writer HQ. And I'll go ahead and see you in some of our following videos where you can learn a lot more about technical writing and everything that it encompasses. Cheers.